Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I got a big update on what's going on with Barrel. Matter of fact, it will intensify, and I will show you all the dynamics of the atmosphere, why I think that. First of all, thank you so much for breaking the record yesterday. Almost or probably right at, by now, 20,000 likes on yesterday's video. Y'all have shown this video to so many people that had no idea what was going on with these impacts and trajectory that it was unbelievable. If you go back and read the comments, you will see how much you helped some people yesterday. Thank you so much. May God bless you so much for caring for others. I appreciate y'all so much. I guess y'all don't like to be number two. That was unbelievable. Look this morning. We have a lot of convection. All this blue is lift. So we have a lot of convection, not only in the outer band, but right here around the core. And this is what you don't want to see. This means it's starting to get itself together and it's about to start rapid intensifying. Now you can see you do have the train of the shear moving in and it is bringing some dry air all the way around it. However, if you take a look, there is none around that core, so nothing is stopping this system from intensifying. Now, these impacts will change. I will update you again this afternoon, but so far you can see in the hurricane force wind field all the way along the coast, but you have the tropical storm force winds covering over Houston all the way up towards Huntsville. So y'all going to start getting the banding starting today that's going to be whipping across Bring in tropical storm force winds, and we still have chances for the tornadoes. For today, you still have the 2% and the 5% as this goes up right on the edge of Houston. This is going to grow for tomorrow as this goes further towards the northeast of Texas. And you can see this has changed also. You got a big 2% going all the way up towards southern Missouri, and the 5% has grown into southern Arkansas. Plus, it's going to be another day. We still got that other shortwave trough that's going to grab barrel and bring it further to the north. And we have a day three chance for tornadoes around the eastern side of this low pressure as it zings towards Indiana. Chances for tornadoes again. Now, you can see on the latest run that it is bringing some rain bands, some outer bands whipping towards Houston. As you go by early this afternoon, this is central time just like yourself. And you can see that will be whipping across all night long, just bringing all this strong outer bands, bringing tropical storm winds with them as well. But if you notice, the banding will go all the way towards Louisiana as well. And watch how these storms go from south to north. That is going to bring you chances potentially for a tornado to quickly spin up, maybe even a water spout real quick. But it's going to be strongest right here along the edge of the center. Now, as you go by midnight, still showing it's a potential midnight landfall overnight nocturnal landfall with a system going right by Bay City so far on this run it will change accordingly it's not getting picked up by that trough until it goes all the way towards landfall and then it's going to get picked up by that trough but it's still bringing these dangerous bands chances for tornadoes as that whips all the way northern all night for tomorrow and further beyond that also you can see this when you look at the trend as you go forward this morning this is where we at so it's going to be a little bit further north than it was on the previous run. And watch how it just pushes to that west, northwest. That's because it's still getting that favorable shear, making it spin and tighten up. And it'll tighten up towards the core, which is going to be west. And then it starts going to that north after it takes that western push. So it's going to go western because it's tightened up, not getting picked up by that trough. And then right before landfall, it's going to take that northern and eastern a little bit more because that's when the trough is grabbing it. And that's where it's going to pull it further to the north and then go up this direction. You can see this when you look at your vorticity as it goes towards landfall. It's still getting pushed to the left by the winds. I'll show you. And right before landfall, here's that trough about to grab it. And boom, right on landfall. That's when the trough grabs this. And that's when it brings it to that north. And then it's going to go to that east with that trough. And watch how it goes further up bringing more chances for tornadoes right here as we get a short wave that grabs that 
and brings that further towards Michigan. Now you can see we do have that upper level low that's putting all that shear on there and there is some dry air getting involved in it, but it is around it, it's not around the core. Then as we go around noontime, this is where it really lets go. It moves to the southwest. Then we start getting those winds, those southerly winds going on the eastern side of the system. Still showing it's going to be favorable shear on this system. And look at the winds now. The lower level winds all the way to the upper level winds are pushing on that northwestern track pretty much vertically stacked at this point. And that's why it moves to the northwest. Then it gets grabbed by that trough, and you can see it's still got favorable shear right here. Still got nine knots, so it's getting a lot of favorable shear. This is going to make it wind up even faster. But now you have your winds pushing to the west because it's not grabbed by that trough just yet. That's why you see that western push right there. And then right when it goes on land, then it gets that northern push because it's getting pulled by the trough. And you can see this. Now you get unfavorable winds. It's starting to affect it while it gets pulled to the north. And since it's a strengthening storm, it's going to be tapped into those winds aloft. And the stronger winds aloft is a northward pull for 25 to 30 knot winds. And that's why you see that head to the north. Still showing it will remain a tropical storm for quite some time and go up to a depression Getting heightened by that next shortwave trough, being around the east side of that, keeping the intensity going all the way to the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as a depression. But you can also see when you look at your relative humidity that you have all this dry air going around it, just like I showed you in the beginning, but you still got all this moisture around the core, and that's what's important. So it gets pushed to the left because of the winds, then it gets pulled to the north because of the trough grabbing it. But if you keep watching it, once it gets on landfall, it still has a good bit of moisture around its center, but now it's starting to get pulled up to the east-northeast, and this dry air is starting to get inside of it. And then right when you get towards northeastern Texas, now it's getting into that core and it greatly weakens down. Showing with every update is getting a little more and more extreme. Showing that it will go all the way up to so far 101 miles per hour winds. Now remember, when this storm system gets on the eye, the way that Texas is being on this angle instead of it being straight into land, the right side of all this banding is still going to be in the warm temperatures, so it will stay strong as it goes on land, bringing y'all all, all the winds and intensity. And you can see as it goes to the north, still staying strong as it goes by Houston, then that dry air gets in it and really weakens down the winds at least. So you can see the latest advisory. They have it as a tropical storm instead of a hurricane right here because it's still trying to get itself together and it's running out of time. So far it's showing it will intensify to that hurricane. Still showing it will be that Cat 2 hurricane right before landfall. Now the one thing these storms always do right here along the coast of the Gulf is it gets shallow when it gets closer towards the coast and that's where the warmest waters is and it usually slows down right before landfall and does a lot of strengthening especially since this trough is not grabbing it early and it's going to be like that all the way to landfall before it gets pulled to the north so this really could intensify to a strong cat too i still believe storm surge is still the same remember all these links are in the description below still showing the one to three feet for southwestern louisiana the two to four three to five for galveston now we have four to six Moving in a little bit where it's going to be hitting on the, the landfall. Matagorda, 4 to 6. All the way down to Corpus Christi, 3 to 5, and then 2 to 4. So you do got a lot of the flooding still coming in. You still got a lot of that storm surge. But as far as the banding going on, it's all going to be east side loaded for the most part. So Corpus Christi, you do got some flooding coming. But as far as the banding and you got to worry about the tornadoes or anything, you're not going to have any of those threats. You can even see spots of orange starting to pick up now which is six feet above ground level, above, above dry ground level. So you can also see it's starting to go in towards the bay, still towards Baytown, east of you. A lot of flooding coming right here, south and east of Houston. This will update as it gets closer, the levels are going to rise. So remember, this link is in the description. Every time you click on it, it will update for you. And have these links for y'all as well. You can see so far, according to the euro, is going right by Houston, all the way up towards northern Texas very heavy amount of rainfall you can see the trend you can also see with gfs exact same area a little bit lighter and you can see with the icon a little bit squeezing more to the east remember this is going to be a big banding system but as soon as it gets on shore 
it's going to tighten up and be a lot smaller. At the same time, you can see it goes right up towards northern Arkansas, all the way up to Illinois and Michigan with all this heavy flooding and the winds. So like I said, you can see Corpus Christi over here. Y'all really are on the mild section. You got the storm surge. You're going to have the rain bands that's going to be whipping around early afternoon. After that, it's really going to lighten up for y'all. But you see so far it's bringing those 60s and 70s in all the way to the north. You can see it also with the icon, which showed the worst. It's still bringing it towards 80s and 90s right along Landfall, you can see with the Euro, it takes it a little bit lighter. And for a trend, you can see with GFS agreeing with the Euro, it could be a little bit lighter. Like it's going to be getting forced towards land so fast, it won't have too much time to intensify. But once it hits that low shelf and that trough don't grab it immediately, that's where you're going to see the intensification. Showing the waves will start moving as you go through this evening and peaking around later tonight. Still showing it be around Lake Jackson, but everyone else is getting around 10 to 12 foot waves. But over by Lake Jackson, you could get 14 or more foot waves. It is more coming towards shore but you see so far your impacts as you go through for this evening and then as you go into tomorrow it starts moving a little bit to the east and dissipating latest update on the rainfall for the next three days everyone in the light green is one to two inches dark green is two to four you can see that the four to six inches is going all the way into missouri southern illinois and down here for texas you can see it's lightened up again now you have the six to eight inches for northeastern Texas, all the way to the eastern of DFW. But right here on landfall, you have the six to eight. You got the eight to 12 right along the coast and even heavier, 12 inches plus right offshore. So now you can see your chances for tornadoes for today. You still have your 2% with Oklahoma. Remember, we still have the storms coming down with that front. The front will create the storms. Then it comes across and grabs our tropical storm or a hurricane as it comes on land you have the two percent and the five percent you can see that five percent has grown a little bit also here's your cities and states at risk for the chance for tornadoes for today and like i showed you in the beginning you can see how it grows for tomorrow you got two percent all the way in southern missouri but now you got a big five percent it has upscaled in the level here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado chances for tomorrow as we go through monday and as you go through Tuesday, here it is, that short wave trough picking it back up again. You have a 5% chance for tornadoes. Here's your cities and states at risk for Tuesday. And you can see this with a strip large. So as it starts getting on land, gets all the winds really strong around the center. All these winds aloft. These are 850 millibars, your lower level winds. This is what brings your chances for your tornadoes because you have winds getting pulled up from the south to the north and you got winds whipping from the west to the east. It gives you wind direction change with height. It gives you a good chance to get those tornadoes. Look as you go towards tomorrow afternoon, it really grows all the way to midnight and beyond. This will keep on going. Now we still have a lot of dust that's still coming through the MDR, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico all the way until late july now we have seen what these waves will do no matter what forces thrive them what they will do even in this dust but i'm showing that we're going to have a couple instances where our high pressure is going to be stretching out we have some storms coming potentially the energy could get pushed into the eastern pacific and not see the same thing that we're seeing right now so our latest on our mjo where we have favorable unfavorable environment it does keep on going but let's go through just a portion of it and see where this is going and here we are this brings us to here so as you take a look this is the caribbean this is central america we have a storm system sometime into the 20s as we get what we have now. So what we have now is we have barrel as we go later in a few days. It's going to be strengthening up or at least some favorable environments going to be passing through as it comes through not only for barrel, but we also have something coming into our Caribbean showing it could get pushed into our eastern Pacific. I will keep you updated. It's still days away. But we still have more favorable environment, another storm system coming right in our region sometime in the 20s that we need to watch for and more down the road. Let's just take one piece at a time. Now you can see when you go a little bit longer, you can see that the barrel does strengthen back up again with that short wave trough. That's why I think the tornado chances could expand even further as this goes along. But at the same time, you can see as you're going into the teens, you got this 
convection, you got favorable environment, you got lift up here, you also have it down here, and you can see that goes right towards the eastern Pacific, not towards us. So that's a little bit of convection that we see in the teens. You can also see after that, we get that high pressure start moving in. When this high pressure is here, it will direct everything right along this path because it is rolling clockwise and nothing can get in with a high pressure and showing it will happen more than once we might get another chance where we get some convection coming through but a high pressure potentially pushing everything into the eastern pacific showing that multiple is going to start flaring up showing the high pressure though i will keep you updated this is further down the road high pressure could easily change and be somewhere else but showing we have multiple waves that's going to start kicking in as we go through the 20s. And if this is not going to come in and threaten the Caribbean or the Gulf, this could go towards Hawaii. I will keep you updated. That is a train of powerful storms coming in the 20s. But most of all, thank you all for your help helping notifying people what is going on. Most importantly, please check on your neighbors. Let them know what's going on with this information. Let them know what's going on with this flooding. So we do have chances for tornadoes still. We still got chances for this to intensify today. It will intensify. How much is still unknown. Seeing that it's not getting pulled up by that trough immediately shows me that it has time to slow down and intensify more right before landfall. I think we will see a lot of strength later on. I will update you this afternoon. Make sure you click that bell and select all. That's what YouTube does now. Otherwise, you won't get notified of all the videos Thank you all for helping so much. I cannot thank you enough for that. God bless you and your families and keep you all safe. And whether it's good or bad, God always makes it out for his glory and it's always for good. Just like yesterday, I went out with my family, had a great time with them. I hit the wrong exit on the interstate, but there was a guy begging for money for food right on the corner. So God sent me to him to help him. It was no mistake. There is no mistakes. Romans 8. 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose amen not everyone is called and those that go towards God were called by God so think about that when you think that you're having a bad day you don't feel so great yourself not only are you worth dying for, you are so special. God called you and called you by your name. What an honor that is. Remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe and peace in your home every single day of your life. And your neighbors. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe. Make sure your preparations are done. Make sure your neighbor's preparations are done. Some people need more help than you can think, and they're not going to say anything. Make sure you take that opportunity to step forward and help them without them asking for help. May you have a great day. I'll see you this afternoon. And God bless you all.